Hey, Kwame here. So um, I saw this request from Lindsay Scholz on the Squarespace forum, and she was having a little bit of an issue recreating this design for her client. I saw it and I thought, hey, it looks quite interesting, like a fun little request. So I thought I would just quickly show you how I would do that. So I'm afraid my test site does not look anywhere near as pretty as yours does, but I have set up a nice little gallery reel section here. I've deliberately set it to small and you will see why in just a moment. So the first thing to do is I'm going to target this section and I believe you had some top. Yeah, you had a bit of spacing. So let's throw that in. I'm going to open a curly bracket and I'm just going to do padding. Let's do 12 view height and nothing. That looks like a good enough size for me to get started with. So first thing, you had this bit of CSS here, which was you were targeting the image itself and you were getting this padding. And I'm assuming um, you said something, what was it? Borders applied, they're not directly on the image. Yeah, so I will show you why that's the case. So if I say put in my border, two pixels solid black, Because of the way you've set that up, targeting the image element, it's just, it's, uh, I don't know if you can see the padding there, but it's just not going to work that way. Instead, target the gallery item wrapper, remove this padding here, because padding isn't going to be how you want to resize those images. And instead, as you can see, it's cutting them off there. What you want to do is do the box sizing and set it to a uh, border box, isn't it? There we go. Cool. So that's the first bit. The next bit, though, is instead of having the padding to resize things, what I would suggest instead is target the gallery real item again. and use a transform on the wrapper, in fact. So I don't even need to target the item. Well, you'll see why I was targeting the item in a second. If I do a transform and I do scale 0.8, that resizes them quite nicely and spaces them out. And perhaps for you, you know, this will be enough. You'll be happy with it. But I did have a look at the way you'd set it up in your mock-up and I don't know, I'm guessing maybe you were having a little bit of difficulty with getting this effect. So I had a bit of a play. Let's change that to 0.9 just for a second, just make it everything a little bit bigger. And what you can actually do is you can target the gallery real item, as I did before. But instead, what we want to do is we want to target only, let's get my inspector out, this one in the middle here. And if you look there, when you're in your inspect tool, you can get this data, data active equals true. And the fun thing with this is if we've got that selector and then we do um, gallery, here's so long winded real item wrapper, we could. large or shrink or just have ooh, maybe not quite that big maybe we just want it to be back to normal size and to me that's probably a lot closer to what you're going for here it does the spacing quite nicely the only issue you're going to have is you probably don't want this rather jerky effect so what we can do to uh, rectify that and to smooth things out a little bit is we can come back up here and we can put a transition on the transform and we can say, let's say 0.3 seconds linear. And oh, sorry. And I've forgotten a semicolon, haven't I? That's it. And as you saw, that smooths things out quite a bit. And you could do an ease or something. The only issue I will point out about this. So, uh, where are we? This item here is the first in the list. And the problem that creates 
is so if you scan through all of the others they're sequential and because this is the first one i must admit i haven't quite figured out why squarespace is doing this yet but when you're transitioning to it from the last item on the list it pops a little bit i suppose what you could do is put a, put a transition here as well but i find again it's not really doing much so that's one thing to bear in mind if you've got a longer list it's less noticeable and if i figure out an update to this i will share that and i suppose the last thing you probably want to do is um, change the positioning of these arrows so for that you can do gallery real controls i think and do um, align items flex end and that pops them down towards the bottom and if I just uh, pull open the inspect tool so that you can sort of take a look at them here. So that's the div that the controls are in. It covers this area on the left and the right hand side. I suppose what you could do if you really wanted is you could shift it down a little bit. So you could do something like top and I did 12 VH for my padding. So maybe six VH. And that shifts it down quite nicely. Or you could do height uh, calc 100% plus uh, 6VH. Oops, sorry, don't put that on the inside. Uh, maybe make it a little bit more. Let's do nine. And as you can see here, that just increases the size of them of the area that they cover rather than just shifting it and it positions them a little bit more preferably for how you had in mind. So yeah, um, hope that's useful for you. I think it creates quite a nice effect. You could of course play around with the spacing a little bit further, do some more interesting things with forwards and afters. Um, if you really want to get rid of this background, I think you can do it in site styles, but otherwise it is, there we go, gallery real, what is it, gallery real button? No, it's not that. It is gallery real control, I think. Give me a second. I can't spot where that is. Maybe that one there. Nope. <laughs> um, I think it's gallery real control button, but I must admit I haven't edited that in a minute. There we go. Yeah, that's ah, it's the before element. So I'm just going to copy that from my inspector and change the background color to actually, to be honest, I could just display none and that'll get rid of it. That's probably easier. So yeah, there you go. I think it's a fairly good job and I hope that helps.